The Science Olympiad is very much like the Sports Olympiad in that teams compete for honors and medals, gold, silver, bronze actually to six places. We also compete for a national title and it's all about building a team to compete in different specific events that are all related to science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. It is large, uh, 2,000 participants almost from, again, 49 states. Nebraska, California, Texas, Kentucky, Japan. You know, to me, this is how science, technology, engineering, mathematics ought to be taught and being, getting our kids engaged in. It's just helped me like love science more throughout the years, and like I just can't live without it now. It's been awesome. It's I been mean, we've really had a great awesome. time. I think it was pretty dramatic, so I'd call it a win. Three, two, one, zero. They're trying to make a rocket stay in the air as long as possible without any parachute. It's a great engineering problem. They could solve it fairly easy with a parachute, but no, they have to adjust fins, centers of mass, center of gravity, uh, you know, that really drives them to start thinking about physics and the real world. It's your rocket, keep hanging on, I'm gonna rotate it up. It's your rocket, my rocket. Okay, any last adjustments? Three, two, one, zero. I'll tell you what I love about this because I am a teacher. This motivates kids to get into pure and applied science and technology and that's what I'm all about. I love it. Three, two, one, zero, 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 zero. This is Mission Possible. It's an event where students take a lot of junk and they make something out of it. And so this year they're, they're dropping a golf ball into the device, but the device has to lift golf balls and put them in a scoring container. But along the way it has to use five forms of energy. And the trick is you have to do it in a certain amount of time, which they did not know until they got here today. We have a whole bunch of these little things we call memes set up, and they're chains of mechanical to electrical to mechanical to electrical uh, changes, where each motor flips the switch, which causes the next motor to turn on. So it's very uh, efficient. Battery dead. Problem. So this is a. We've been doing a lot of tests with this, so the batteries are probably dead. We're going to change the batteries out. That's why we do test runs. Make sure that things like that don't happen. In three, two, one. Much better. I like this event so much because it takes students through problem solving. They go through the engineering process to solve problems. They really like it. It's hands-on. They can be creative. They, they really get engaged. You almost have to make the students stop. They love this. They want to do this event all the time. This is forensics. It's, that's what they're supposed to do, is determine who did it. And, and the neat thing about this is that it's all logic. They have to put all of the evidence together to determine who really did it. It's, it's a very devious crime. Somebody has stolen a mo money and put something on fire. Uh-oh. We're trying to figure out what these substances are and um, we just have like different chemicals to help us out. Acid, bases, etc. It's pretty cool. <laughs> and we have blood samples too. If they get it, it's a lot of fun. Unfortunately, if they decide to just go with the surface evidence, they're not going to get it right. They have to think about it very deeply. This is an air trajectory event where students are to design and construct a device that's capable of launching a ball to a distance of eight meters. And what they want to do is be able to shoot far and close with great deal of accuracy. So they're trying to get within millimeters of a target. Short target. Three. Two. We had a um, like an abello bellow system, so when it pushes down, it comes back out, and we had a hammer that fall on it. There's a lot of education in this. They learn how to graph. They learn how to predict 
They have to learn about experimentation and calibration of a device. They try something, it may not work at first, so they have to try something else. It develops critical thinking skills, it develops engineering skills, and they learn how to do ballistic curves. Launching, we are up! Oh, nice shot! We had to use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out where the distances should be and yeah. the angle which it should be at. We had to use it for the bucket shot. We had to use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out what the distance between us and the bucket was. And it worked. We have a partner and we build a bridge uh, together and then we do, we test it on the hoppers that are back there and then you put a block on top and a chain that goes down and a bucket and then you're testing how much weight it can hold. So once it breaks then you stop testing. Okay, let me check it first before you go. Uh, that looks good. And then to calculate your score it's an efficiency so you take how much it weighed in grams, so up a max of 15,000 grams, divided by the mass of your bridge and then you get an efficiency. It's hopefully a good one. <laughs> It's been stressful but fun at the same time. A lot of long hours put into building a small boss boss structure just to have it break in a minute. But it's rewarding to have it's all worth it at the end. Yeah, it's all worth it. Great job. So everybody loves to be best at something. That's a, that's a natural human trait. There's always a component for all 46 of the events of problem solving, some hands-on component where students have to demonstrate their knowledge and skill. A lot of kids don't figure they, they're capable of doing this until they get engaged in a real activity and they find out, I can do this. And they end up going on to higher levels of aspiration. So this is incredibly motivational for just millions of students over 30 years. You can see the passion it develops. In first place, our national champion from the state of California, Troy High School.